Hi guys, have you ever been out hiking following deer and then uh, when you looked up you all of a sudden discovered you were alone and lost? You thought that the trail was just a few steps over there and then when you turned around it was gone. You begin to panic and you, so you, you start wandering further and further and trying to find the trail. But no luck. What started as a relaxing day in the woods now gets scary. This has happened to me. Although it's a frightening experience to be lost and alone in the woods, survival is generally a matter of common sense, patience, and then using the gifts that nature provides. In this video, I'll show you some tips that I've learned the hard way, as well as recommendations from survival experts. It all begins with preparation. Always prepare before you go into the woods, even if you are very familiar with the area, even if you don't plan to be there very long. First, make sure that someone knows where you are every time you go into the wilderness and how long you intend to be gone. I usually tell three people, my wife, a camping buddy who's not on the trip with me, and then local forest personnel. I provide my phone number, and if there's a local phone number, for the forest, I also provide that. If I don't return on time, my contacts will realize that I'm missing and contact rescuers. When I do return, I let everybody know that I'm back and safe. Hello? Hey, Bob. Hey, Ken. I'm at uh, Lake Niederhofer and I should be spending the day here. I've told the Forest Service and I've also told Deb if I'm not back by um, sunset, call out the uh, search and rescue team. I'll be back though. Okay, well, be careful and be careful of the heat. Bring lots of water. I'll bring lots of water. All right, be careful. Bye. Second, always carry a basic survival kit. Mine includes a knife, uh, butane lighter and metal matches, compass, flagging, whistle, little light, cordage or string, a plastic bag. This is a very large heavy duty plastic bag. I expand the kit depending on the situation and the weather. Uh, sometimes I carry a big tarp with me. And of course, always I have several water bottles. Third, for an added level of security, bring a cell phone. Although in many areas phone coverage is incomplete, a signal may be obtainable from a hill or a tree. Fourth, take a GPS unit if you have one. This is wonderful technology that can pinpoint your exact location. However, don't rely on it as your sole means of determining where you are. If it were to stop working, you'll need to use methods that our ancestors did, such as the position of the rivers, uh, the position of the mountains, where the sun is in the sky, and compass positioning. Always look at a map of the area before you start hiking. Compare the trees, the rivers, the hills that you see indicated on the map to what you actually see in person. I take a mental note of what's on my left side, what's on my right side as I walk down the trail. Also, every so often I turn around looking at what's behind me and then taking a mental note again to remember this is what the trail will look like or should look like upon my return. If you have a GPS unit, be sure to mark your starting location before you leave your car or truck. I've forgotten to do this a few times and the GPS wasn't too much use other than as a compass. So mark your starting location before you leave your, your vehicle. Also, mark your trail along the way, particularly if you're not sure of the trail. You can bend twigs, you can drag a stick along the ground, you can put out flagging. Do something so that you remember the trail. If you do use flagging, be sure to take it down on your return trip so that it doesn't litter the forest and possibly confuse other hikers. 
An interesting history point is that Native Americans also marched trails by bending twigs and tree limbs. And now many years later, these trees have grown. And when you walk through the forest, you may see a, a big tree with a limb that's bent down in a strange way. The, these trees were uh, probably marker trees used by the Indians many, many years ago. Sooner or later, you'll be confronted with a situation where you know where you are in general, but you just don't know where the car is. You thought it was over there, but it isn't. You've got 360 degrees to choose from. The urge is to start running around trying to remember landmarks. This is the worst thing that you can do. It's called panic. When panic sets in, your brain stops working. And when your brain stops working, you can't help yourself. The acronym STOP works really well. Stop what you're doing. Sit down to keep yourself from running or walking. Have a drink of water. Water washes the taste of fear right out of your mouth. Sit for 30 minutes or so to reduce the adrenaline that is flooding your system. Use this time to think. Use your brain to evaluate the threat that is facing you. Is it getting dark? Is it getting cold? Are you hurt? Uh, what exactly do you need to do? Observe your surroundings. Are they similar? How are they different from where you were before you became lost? Is the river on which side of you? What about the mountains or other landmarks? And then finally, develop a plan. Ask yourself, what am I going to do? Decide if you are really lost or if you're only slightly disoriented. If you are really lost, you should stay put where you are and wait for help. If you are slightly disoriented, you should search for the trail. Be sure to mark your path so that you can backtrack if you need to. If you have a map and you have a compass and you know where nearby roads are, you can head in that direction. If you are in the woods overnight, it is important to find or create shelter. Fortunately, the woods are filled with tools and resources that you can use. Rock cliffs, caves, and large trees all can provide shelter. If it's raining, I cut a hole in a large plastic bag and put it over my head. If I'm cold, I put twigs and leaves under the plastic for insulation. I breathe directly into the open air, not into the plastic bag. Your breath has a lot of moisture in it, and that would will reduce your insulation effectiveness. For additional shelter, I use a large tarp, attaching one end to the ground and the other end to branches. Survival guides often describe complex shelter designs, but I found that simplicity is best. To make a shelter, I attach cordage or a rope to a branch with a timber hitch. This knot is simple to tie and untie. Wrap the line around a tree and then the line around itself to create a lasso effect and then continue to wrap it around itself. Then put the line through the eyelets of the tarp using a stick to attach. No need for the rope to be tied to the tarp. At the other end of the tarp, I tie two half hitches to another branch and make the line taunt. For the bottom of the tarp, put a section of rope through each eyelet and tie it to a stick using a knot that everyone knows, a bow knot, like the one you use to tie your shoelaces. I double knot it for security. Light a fire in front of the shelter and you will be very comfortable. 
You've now turned a scary night out into an inconvenient night out. Your survival kit should include some way of making fire. A butane lighter, metal matches, or regular matches, these work great. Although it is possible to start a fire by rubbing sticks together, very few people have the necessary skill. For a fire starter, I carry cotton balls that are soaked in petroleum jelly. These will start a fire even if your ground is wet, if the wood's wet, uh, there's enough heat generated through the petroleum jelly to get the fire going quickly. I keep them double packed in plastic bags to keep my backpack from getting sticky. To light a fire, take out your cotton ball and then spread the fibers apart so that they will catch fire easier. Put them on the wood pile that you've already prepared and then light. It's as simple as that. Find a good source of water. In a survival situation, you can last up to three days without water. But by the end of the second day, you're not going to be in very good shape. Springs and streams are good sources of water. Boil the water to make sure that it's safe or use chemical tablets if you have them. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need to boil water very long in order to make it safe. Just bring it to a boil. Here I am collecting water in an old plastic container I found. I'm going to hang it above my campfire on a tripod in order to boil the water. This will keep the bottle high enough above the flames so that it doesn't melt and yet at the same time the water boils. If there aren't springs or streams in your area, you can take your jacket sleeves and tie them to your ankles. Then wade along the grasses in the morning and you, your, your uh, jacket sleeves will get moisture on them. You can then suck the moisture out of the fabric. You can survive several weeks without food, so hunting, fishing, and gathering wild edibles is not an urgent priority. The wilderness, however, provides many food sources. To find out more about them, check the links listed below. One of the reasons that people end up getting lost roaming around the backcountry is that they don't know how to use a compass. It takes more time to learn than I can show you with this video, but here is a simple way to walk a straight line with a compass. First, pick your destination, and you know, this forest is so dense I can't see very far. However, there's a tree over there with some red marks on it and a red flag. That will be my direction of heading. I know that if I head in that direction for a couple of miles, I'll run into a road. And so, uh, the way I, I do this is I set my direction of travel towards the tree so that the direction of travel arrow is pointing at the tree and then turn the compass dial until the end aligns with the red index line of the needle. Read your heading in degrees at the index line. And this is 70 degrees. Now it's simply a question of walking in the direction that your compass tells you to. Your destination is locked into the compass. Even if it were to get dark, you'd be able to make it to your destination. For more information about compasses and map reading, check the links listed below. There are several things that you can do to increase your odds of being rescued. First, carry a whistle. Your voice makes a lousy signal. It doesn't carry very far. And so buy the best whistle you can and use it. <whistles> Second, carry a mirror. Reflect light back up to the rescuers. If you don't have a mirror, use some trash you find in the forest, aluminum foil or a soda can. A third alternative is to use a smoky fire. If you choose to use this alternative, then make sure you can keep that fire under control. 
It's one thing to be lost in the forest. It's another thing to be lost in the forest with a wildfire. For more information, check the links listed below. This video provides only the basics for survival if you're lost in the woods. Please comment and add your suggestions and experiences.